Welcome back to Create Craft Costume, where here we're getting ready for Halloween. Which is one of my favorite holidays, and so I'm thrilled to be seeing all of the witch broom options in stores, but in my personal opinion, they're either way too overpriced or way too short for me. So what I love about today's tutorial is we will show you how to make a full-sized witch broom using a dowel and some extra yarn from your yarn stash. So let's get started. This project is gonna be a good yarn stash buster because you need at least five to six different colors of yarn for both the bristles and the handle. And we're gonna start building the bristles first. So first, you're gonna pick your varieties of yarn. You can use any yarn you have, any thickness you have. The thicker the yarn, the less you have to wind it around the, your chair, and the fuller the bristles are. So you can use the chenille yarns, the ones that have variegated weights, anything you want really works in this kind. The warm and cozy ones, the fuzzy ones, any kind of yarn will work. Once you have chosen the colors and types of yarn, you are going to find the end of that piece of yarn. Pro tip, go from the middle and it is less likely to tangle. And we are wrapping it around an item that is about 33 inches long. If you don't have chairs like this, just go for about a yard in length. Other things that you could use that I've used in the past that you might not think about, you could use the end of your kitchen counter, um, the end of your table if it laps over. Um, anything that's about that long, if you have another part of the banister that you could use. I've even used my husband holding his hands out. Wasn't his favorite job, but there's a lot of things you could use. Involve those grandkids. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So now you've got your strands of yarn. You're going to tie a slip knot, put it around the end of if you have a loop like on these chairs, or if not, you can just tape it to the chair, or tape it to the counter, whatever. So you just have a place that it can stay. Then you're going to just start wrapping and wrap and wrap and wrap. Tip, keep the yarn tight um, and make sure you don't drop one as you go. It's very easy to drop one, but just make it tight. You don't want it to slip off and just wrap and wrap and wrap. Before you ask me how many times you need to wrap this around, I wanna make sure you understand the length of your bristles. I'm holding it in the middle here, and that's because that's where you're gonna tie your bristles off. So on either side of my hand, that's your left and your right side of the bristles. So your entire 33 inches that we're wrapping here, that's two sides, not just one. So you determine how much you want to wrap it based on how thick you want your bristles. And that's why the types of yarn and how many skeins you have matter. The more body or the more, t more yarn, you will have thicker bristles. And you can just pull it up, grab it, see do you like that thickness, and continue wrapping if you don't. Also, massive pro tip here, you're trying to handle seven skeins of yarn and they all have a mind of their own. I am not saying it can't be done by yourself, but I personally would not try it. So I would always attempt this with two people if that is possible. Okay, as you're wrapping, if one of the strands of yarn runs out, it's no big deal. Just bring it up to the end where you started and just leave it right there and then continue wrapping around with the others. So now we have the yarn wrapped as many times as we want. We're happy with the thickness. So we're going to come back to that slip knot we are going to undo that slip knot. You can just pull on the one end, it will come apart. Then you're gonna take that end and the strands at the other end that you finished, tie them all together. Doesn't have to be a pretty knot because that knot will be cut out once the bristles are attached to the broom, just to keep them from falling apart. Our next step is to get the bristles off the item that we wrapped them around. And you wanna make sure that middle is tight and secure. We use plenty of yarn to wrap around it because you might need to move or finagle or just use some general ingenuity to get the item off. But you are going to secure the bristles in the middle to your handle. So it may not look like fancy right now, but don't panic because now we're moving on to building the broom handle. Okay, heading back to the yarn stash, this time for the broom handle. Pick out a, another five or six skeins of yarn. 
gather all of those yarns together, coming preferably from the middle, because this next part has a lot of room for error. We have to make the handle super long because we are braiding it. In this case, we are wrapping it around her 13 foot banister. If you don't have a banister, just make sure it's about 13 feet long. And this is where your, your partner is your friend because you're gonna have one sit on one end and one sit on the other end and you are going to wrap and, and manage wrap. and untangle and have fun. Good luck. Two people, you need two people, I promise you won't regret it. Okay, as you can see, we started this the same way that we did the bristles of the broom. You start it with the slip knot, wrap, wrap, wrap as much as you want, and then you're going to end it at the same place you started. If you run out of a skein, this process is the same. Just leave it where you started. You'll tie them all together at the end. Exact same process, just a longer distance. Once you have reached your desired thickness, before you take it off, we're gonna do two additional ties on this one. First, we're gonna tie it at the opposite end of where we started, just to help keep those together. We are also gonna do a loose tie in the middle before going back to the end that we started, removing that loop and combining all of our strands together into one knot. The reason we are creating so many tacking places is because you have to move this to your bristles and you do not want this getting tangled especially if you don't have someone who knows how to untangle yarn, but just make it easy on yourself. Make it as easy to move as possible, and then we're gonna immediately add the bristles to make sure it doesn't have more of a chance to get tangled. So now this becomes really fun. So we are at the end of the broom handle where there are no knots. It's where the yarn has wrapped around the bottom of the banister. The knots are all at the other end of this. So we are that's where we're going to attach our bristles. So we're going to go get our bristles, go to the middle part of them where we tied it, and slide that through this opening in the broom. To keep the bristles in place, we are gonna use two strands of yarn. And we are going to, using two people, tie one strand, which will get us close to the top of the bristles. But as you can see, there's still a gap. It's really hard to get all of those bristles tight. So you tie it once, then take another double strand of yarn and tie it as absolutely close to the top of those bristles as you can. And then you see there is no gap, but you have two pieces of yarn. Don't worry, you're about to cut the first one. Okay, so the last tie is to make the little fluffy, poofy thing at the top. And again, as Ashley is so fond of saying, two people are required to do this. So you want to straighten out those yarns as much as you can because once you tie it, the, that yarn is going to stay stuck. that way. <laughs> yeah, so make it really tight, have somebody hold it, and then wrap that yarn around twice, cinch it up, and tie it off. Now we're ready to address the handle again. And while we are braiding it, we are also adding a 7 16th inch dowel in between it in order to give it some stability and being able to maneuver it like a broom. But before we put the dowel in, we need to prepare for the dowel. And that means we need to make three separate pieces just like we were starting a braid. Now remember these strands are like Rapunzel's hair, which is why I am on the other side of the broom. She's a chicken. Right yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So anyway, on the other end of this broom handle, we are going to go down and we are going to cut that other end that's wrapped around. That's where the knots were. So we're cutting out those knots. Then we're going to separate them into three long strands. And as you can see, we've got them laid across the cutting table. I'm going to take the first strand, I'm going to take that and tie a little slip knot in the end, and then go up about halfway and tie another slip knot. And I'm going to put them together and put them in a Ziploc bag. I'm done. Two more. Seal it up so it's not going to get tangled as we do the twisting and the braiding. Do that with the other one, and then we are ready to put in that dowel. And in order to secure that dowel, you want to make sure that you have three pieces of floral wire. And remember when I said that we are going to cut the first piece of yarn that we tied onto the handle? That's because that's where we're gonna place our dowel. It's really hard to squeeze that in between what you've already tied, so I recommend cutting it, tying a new one, 
and then you're going to secure just the middle strand and the dowel using pieces of floral wire. We are only using the middle strand right now and that's because we are hiding the dowel inside that middle strand. Don't see us add another piece of yarn here because we forgot to do it in this segment, but we do add it later. But now I'm just adding a piece of floral wire at the bottom. I'm going to add one in the middle and at the top, and that's going to help keep these strands of yarn surrounding this dowel to make it as enclosed as possible. So we have our three sections, one with the dowel in it, the other two. You've probably figured out we are not braiding this around the dowel because we only have two that move. So we are crossing them in front and then we are crossing them underneath the dowel. This will secure the dowel in place, keep it invisible, and give the broom the ability to stand up. We will just keep doing that. That's why the plastic bags are so important because you can flip them under and over the dowel and it's not going to get tangled. Okay, once you've got that pattern down, continue that all the way to the end of the dowel. When you reach the end of the dowel, then you are going to start braiding those three strands. And you will continue down the strands because you will need enough to tie a knot in the end. And it takes more braiding than you think. So I would go past the end of the dowel at least 12 inches. Then you will have enough to tie the yarn into the knot and then cut off the other ends. As you can see here, we are trying to get that knot as close to the top of the dowel as possible. And remember, if you make your braid longer, the knot will just fall off the dowel. So you need to consider what type of decoration you want before cutting your yarn. Also, as a side note, don't think that you can't braid the entire handle. That was actually how we did the first broom of these and it's adorable. It's just not great for posing or hanging sideways on a wall. So you just want to think of how you're going to use the broom before you finish it. Okay, now this is my absolute favorite part. Because and the messiest. Mm, yeah, but it's the closest I will ever get to being a hairdresser. And I get to give the broom a haircut. The easy part is to cut off the extra at the top. You can make that as long as you'd like. You can cut it off straight across the top so it's very uniform or keep it messy, whatever you want to do on the top. And then you go down to the bristles. The easiest thing to do on the bristles is start cutting some of those loops first so you can get those just straighten out, particularly the ones on the side. Then they will hang lower. Then have somebody, again, two people, hold that up so it hangs down straight and then start cutting it off like you were cutting somebody's bangs. Just cut it off as you want it to be. Again, as long or as short as you'd like it to be. We like the longer bristles, so we just trim it up even. Then, and again with bangs, if you cut it too short, you're stuck. Yeah. So slow and steady wins this slow race. Slow and steady. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And there you go. There your broom's done. Tie a bow on it and you're good to go. Okay, now you know how simple this process is. And this process is with the two people. <laughs> yes, with two people, that helps. But it's the process is the same, whether you're making a two foot broom or a five and a half foot broom, whatever, you just adjust what you're wrapping the yarn around. So have fun. And these would be a great addition to any costumes that you might be having. And if you want to learn some tips for adjusting store-bought costumes, we made a video on that last year, which we will link down below. Now, 
if you make any from our costume video or these, we would love to see it over on our Instagram. Please share with us. Our handle is also create craft costume and we're really trying to grow. So if you like this, please make sure to share it with anyone who's looking for some witchy decor vibe and the like button, it's right below. So please <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you in our next video. Take care out there.